And here is layer masking 104. This time we are going to uh, apply the masking technique by making a creative border on this particular image. So instead of just applying a treatment such as a blur or a texture or some other kind of filter, we're just going to use a different colored layer. So the first step in order to do this is I want to make sure my background layer is not locked. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit that little padlock to remove the lock so it is um, available to adjust if needed. I don't really need to make a copy of the background layer because since I'm using masking, it's a non-destructive way to edit. So I'm going to have another layer on top that I'll be working with. So what this is going to look like is um, imagine if we cover this image in white or black, and then we use a brush to reveal back and, and make some creative edging on this image. So that's what the um, ultimate goal is for this particular example. So I have my original layer. Now I need to add a color layer. So I'm going to go ahead and add a white layer. So I'm going to switch to make sure white is my foreground. And then I'm going to add a new layer. So in the bottom right hand corner of your layers palette where the plus sign is, that's how you add a new layer. And then I'm gonna fill it with white. So I can use the paint bucket tool. And if your paint bucket tool does not show up on your toolbar, go to that ellipsis where the three little dots are and you can find your paint bucket tool accordingly. And then I'm just gonna click. So I have the white paint on the um, uppermost layer. And then if I toggle that off, you can see the flamingo layer underneath. So I'm just gonna grab a brush and brush away so that I can reveal the layer underneath. But like always, in order to use a mask, we have to add a mask because this is not an adjustment layer, so it's not built in. So come down to the bottom of the layers palette, go to your add a layer mask button and click on it. So although it looks like two white boxes looks confusing, the first left white box here, that is just the fill of the white color. And the next one is your mask. So I'm ready to paint. It's a white mask. I need to grab black, I need to grab a brush, and then I can change the size of my brush and we can reveal. So it's, a, it's uh, just like we've done with the previous videos when it comes to layer masking and reveal, but this time instead of a treatment on this layer, we just have a color. What would make this more interesting is if we really incorporated a better brush. This brush is pretty random. It's just a, or pretty standard. It's just a regular circle with a little bit of feathering on it. But we have access to a bunch more brushes here in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo what I did there just by Command Z, Command or Control Z. And now I'm gonna go up and take a look at my different brushes. So when I um, click on this little drop down next to my brush, I see there are several other brushes. This particular panel is generally pretty small, the default is, but on the bottom right hand corner, I can actually make it a little bit bigger. So it makes it easier to kind of see what I'm looking at. And one more step, um, as I scroll down to the bottom, notice there are other folders of brushes. These are all supplied to us by Photoshop. So it's a great option to be able to see several different brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the dry media brushes just to come up with something a little bit different. And I like the chunky charcoal brush. So I'm gonna choose chunky charcoal and I can change the size of my brush if I would like to right here. I can also change it by using the um, bracket keys once, once I'm back to my document. So I'm gonna collapse the brush um, palette here just by clicking on the little downward arrow and come over to my document. So when I look at um, the idea of this brush is I'm gonna again paint away, but this brush has more texture. So it's gonna add a little better edging to the, this technique for a border. So I do wanna make the brush a little bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna click and drag and notice the different look of this brush. It'll take a moment for the computer to catch up to me. And then we can touch it up in different areas just by using either black or white because we are masking. So I missed a few areas in here, missed a little bit in here, a little bit more towards the top. And then I can kind of randomly fill in where it doesn't look consistent. And if I decide it's um, too much, like if I didn't want that, 
because I'm using a mask, it's non-destructive editing, all I do is toggle back to the white color, either with my X key or hitting the toggle button, and then I can erase. So I do wanna make sure that particular part of the flamingo is pretty clear and sharp. And then it's all a little bit subjective on just what it is you like and what, um, how you want that border to look. And the neat thing is, is because we have used a layer mask, let's say, you know, the white seems too stark. I want a darker colored border and maybe a dark green. So it kind of transitions a little better. So I can go back and select my color box. Click on the white color as my foreground color to get the color picker. And then I can just choose another color. Select the paint bucket tool and fill. And it has changed my background to green. I'm not sure I really like that, but maybe I like black. So I'm gonna go back to the foreground, uh, reverse my foreground and background colors. I have the black, grab my paint bucket and click. Yeah, maybe the black edging looks a little better, but that's the neat thing about using layer masks is non-destructive editing and you can uh, change things up constantly and not negatively impact the original image. So reminder when it comes to masks, the masks are revealing. When you paint in black, it reveals what's on the layer underneath and otherwise the white area conceals. So one last step to get us back <coughs> to where we were, when I click on my actual color layer where I had switched from white to green to black, notice my color picker is black and green again. If you ever have difficulty and you wanna get back to just black and white, you can always use D on the keyboard, D, and that takes you back to your default black and white colors. So that's a pretty handy shortcut to know too. So there you go, using layer mask to create borders. In addition to layer masking and creating borders, we change the brush out. So go ahead and give that a try.